Well, hello, folks. How is everybody doing today? Where'd the wild things grow, part two? On June 15th, we had a mighty cold night. It got down into the single digits. 8 Celsius and uh, 46 Fahrenheit. Mm, that was feel-like temperatures, which plants, they say, don't care about the uh, wind chill factor, but I don't know. So 11 Celsius and 52 Fahrenheit on um, June 15th. It's the middle of June. What the heck? My peonies. Oh, my peonies. I enjoy my peonies plants. But the last couple of years, the red one, which is to the right of my water barrel, isn't doing so well. But the white one, as you can see, that plant is full of blooms. And it's doing beautifully. And it's to the left of the water barrel. Now, to the right of the water barrel, it sort of runs over because it gets full. <laughs> Could be the problem. It's getting too much water. My butternut squash is doing great. And my... My... Um, <clears throat> Plants in the yard are doing beautifully. They're getting just enough rainwater, and I'm not overwatering them. And it's um, it's easy to overwater in the yard, but you've got plenty of soil for it to dissipate. Where container gardening is another thing altogether. So this pretty much will be the last, except for the vegetables growing. I will show those from time to time when they start developing on the vine. <clears throat> but a lot of the pictures of the yard, I'm gonna. This will be the last time I'll show, except for maybe the hydrangeas when they bloom. Uh, pretty much my videos are going to be showing my deck garden and my yard garden. I had to divide cousin it, the asparagus plant. I know it wasn't the right time. You're supposed to do it in the spring or the fall, but you know it just it was giving me spaghetti, asparagus. So I had to do something. So I figured if I killed it, I killed it. If I didn't, I didn't. I'm running an experiment with bush beans, radishes, and okra in one container. Yeah, yeah, that I am. So I figured the format would just be sort of chatting with you folks. Just telling you about my day and the trials and things that I have to go through as a gardener here in Ontario, Canada. Yeah, yeah. My experiment with the uh, bush beans, okra, and the radishes is, my thought process is, when the beans are done, the okra can flourish, and the beans will shade my radishes so they don't go to seed. Now this container is a recycle bin, which I have definitely overwatered, and then it rained. So, yeah, it's raining right now, so I have it covered. My collard greens are doing beautifully in my garden truck that I made a number of years ago. I'm very happy about that. I love collard greens. I can't wait to eat them. The chipmunk has been slacking off with his eating of the strawberry duties. Look at the strawberries that are there waiting for him. I'm just amazed. See, you give up to the, to the chipmunks and they leave stuff alone. Hmm, maybe there's a process there. More butternut squash in different parts of the yard. I have certain parts that slugs love and other parts that they don't. Just had to give you another shot of my beautiful peonies. I just love this flower. And the smell is so beautiful. As soon as my honeysuckle tree gets done flowering and the aroma is gone, then my peonies start blooming and I have more fragrant, beautiful fragrance beautiful red one. Looks pink in the picture, but it's actually a pretty red color. And um, it's doing quite well. Oh, my echinacea, or coneflower, as other people call it, are doing really well. But it's doing better in the other part of the yard that's coming up right now. We can't see it because there's too many things in here. Hydrangeas, hostas, irises, but it's doing very well in there because it gets a direct sunlight for most of the day. The hostess, the variegated hostess, is ginormous this year, as is the plant to the left of it, which I don't know what it's called. But it had a beautiful flower, and the hydrangeas, they're, they're just almost ready to pop with the white color. I can't wait to see them. I love them. And I divided the hydrangea. I just yeah. 
and I divided the hostess last summer at the towards the end of summer and they're filling in nicely so this is the first full year that they're going to be well at the end of the year <laughs> and uh, yeah there's where I trans I made a transplant of hydrangeas and there's uh, some, another tree growing there I don't know what it is and this is my rhubarb, which I've already harvested twice, so it looks a little spindly right now. But it's growing beautifully since I moved it from the back of this area. It gets more sunshine. So 2017 year old seeds I'm trying again. The Swiss chard is not up yet, but they usually take a little longer. But the broccoli and pak choy are up. And my wannabe bonsai, bonsai tree. It has a cedar tree and it has a, um, a silver birch. Did you know that the silver birch trunk is brown with little dots on it? Uh, while it's a juvenile, but when the bark gets older, it will turn white and silver looking. And my collard greens, another angle, and cucumbers. Isn't that interesting? Every other one of the cucumbers is growing beautifully. <laughs> I don't know why that is. This is my styrofoam container, which has um, spinach and turnips in it. That's what's up right now. The rest of the stuff isn't. I'll show you the shad fly. We usually don't get these until um, August. This is a bug that has no mouth. Its only purpose in life is to feed the fish in the lake here. So, yeah, they're out early. Now my container tote. I didn't think all these seeds were going to go. I have tomatilla at each end. I have stored tomato seeds from the store. I have Roma. I have banana pepper. I have okra. I had a question from a subscriber, Helene. Helene V. She asked me what happened about the Romanesco um video that i made i entered a challenge a single seed challenge in 2020 and i thought i had 2017 year old seeds so to make matters even harder for myself i decided to enter scott gumbo's single seed challenge with the romanesco broccoli it started out great seedling popped right up the plant grew big and strong once it went outside and then the cabbage moth found it the cabbage moth butterfly yes started laying eggs yes I started daily picking them off and in the evening and then here in Ontario Canada I ran out of time it didn't have enough time to come to a head or the seeds were just too old and not viable enough for the plant to produce a Romanesco broccoli head. But the leaves I cleaned off and they were tasty. And the leaves taste like broccoli. So it wasn't a loss in July 24th of 2020. Thank you so much, Elaine, for your question and inquiring about the Romanesco broccoli head and the challenge that I had entered. Whatever happened to the 2016 pineapple challenge? We started it on September 7th. Yes, the grumpy gardener challenged everybody. So I ripped two little heads off, actually five little heads off my pineapples. I waited three days for the root to harden off. I planted them up, put a few pebbles around, and away we went. Although I did not pot up after they went into this size pot. So, I mean, they grew, they grew. The leaf span was about six feet on the left, six feet on the right. The circumference of the leaf span was around six feet. I had to keep trimming back the leaves because they're very pointy and very dangerous and it was taking over my house. But I couldn't give up. I gave up on four. Yes, I did. They went out into the compost bin, but I couldn't give up on Oahu, the fifth one. So last winter, 
I sort of gave up on Oahu. I pulled it out of the dirt. Yes, I did. Shook it off, washed it off, put it in a glass jar of water, a little bit of uh, feed for it, and all winter long, it sat in water, and it lived, and it survived. And here it is now, back in soil, outside. Who knows what's going to happen to this poor plant? Who knows if it's going to survive being planted back in the soil? I don't know. It was just a few weeks ago. Time will tell. To be continued. Pardon the typo. It was September 7th, not September 17th on this picture. But who knows what's going to happen, whether or not this pineapple will come back inside after summer is over, because I won't bring outside soil in the house and I don't have any other soil potting mix to use so it may actually I'll take it out of the soil again if it survives this summer clean it off all the soil put it in a vase of water and take it through the winter that way again because it kept growing I mean the top of the leaves were growing about well they cut really tall six or seven inches so I mean Really, it may not fruit doing the, all this weird stuff to it, but it's staying alive. There's a song about that and a dance. Okay, folks, June 21st, my goodness, it got down to 3 Celsius last night. Today's the 22nd, and it's only 5 Celsius out there right now, and it's 20 after 9 in the morning. The sun is shining. We are having such a roller coaster ride of weather. It's unbelievable. Well, hello folks. I survived the three Celsius temperature last night. I covered my tomatoes, my peppers, my cucumbers, my okra. So almost for two days, my tomatoes were covered with a bed sheet. Yes, they were. And a plastic topping for the deluge of rain that we did receive. To the right is the banana pepper, and to the left was the okra. So far, since the end of May, this summertime weather has not been hot enough to grow okra. But we'll see. My turnips. These are Tokyo turnips. Oh boy, they're going to be about two inches in diameter when you harvest them. I can't wait. And they only take 35 to 40 days, so I've sown some more seeds today, a couple more dozen, in a larger container. My bush bean, radish, and okra experiment in one container is coming along beautifully. The bush beans are almost ready to flower. I sowed a few more bush beans last week and they're popping up the last couple of days. Happy, happy! Aren't they just so sweet when those beans pop their little heads out of the soil? I tell you, it's fun times to be a gardener. And my Swiss chard and broccoli rab are sort of struggling here because it's just not warm enough for much to uh, get a good foothold. I have some more plants, some more tomato plants, a bean plant. I've sown a few extra beans in there, and there's one cabbage in that planter. In this planter, um, I think that's more of my turnips in this row. And this is my garden truck. Those are my cucumbers. They are really happy, happy. They've been covered, and they haven't been overly saturated with water. But my Tokyo turnips, they are looking beautiful. I'm so happy. My pineapple, I had to trim the leaves down because they kept smacking me in the face. So it's still alive after being for a few weeks planted in the soil again. 